This is a very serious release by Pocketbook. This is the InkPad X Pro, and Pocketbook is not messing around any longer. This is the first Pocketbook to come with a Wacom screen, it's the first Pocketbook to come with a stylus, and this is the first Pocketbook to play videos. This puts Pocketbook in an interesting position to essentially be able to handle anything, as this opens them up to exploring a full note-taking multimedia branch of their business. Needless to say, we cannot wait to dive into this, so let's get going. We have a lot to cover, but we're going to start with the overall weight of this. And of course, for reference, just keep in mind, an absolute base Kindle is about 200 grams. This is 354, although it is a little bit on the light side, considering something like a Tab Ultra is 450. So this is a lighter unit. And for the pen, real quick, let's put that on there. 7 grams, 6 grams fluctuating. Now this is a very normal pen. We will touch on this very quickly. This is the pen, not to demean anyone that uses it, but this is the pen that you use as a company when you don't know what pen to choose. This is the standard base model pen that everyone uses. Even Fujitsu uses this one in gold. Hi Reed uses it, Boyu uses it. A lot of manufacturers use this because it is good. It does everything, but this has been produced since 2013. So it's 11 years old and it doesn't precisely have anything super special about it. This is the InkPad Pro. It does borrow stylings from basically everything in their lineup, which is extremely evident when you look at the bottom chiseled edges here. Now they don't want the hard 90 degree to rest into your hand like that. So what they do is they actually cut a few degrees off. So it's really soft and it honestly is. They also have a two-tone color with a gunmetal around the side and a matte black surrounding the bezel. Now this is a sunken screen. Look at that. We haven't seen sunken screen note taking since the Remarkable One, the King Jim Freno, the Boyu, all really old 2018-19 devices. But this one's bringing it on back. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're using pens on this. You want to avoid things like the Super Note Heart of Metal that use ceramic tips or the Wacom Titanium tips that work on certain devices because you will scratch this screen. You have very nice stylings on the back. It's a complete dark black matte out. It does leave a little bit of fingerprinting as you can see here, although we do alcohol our fingertips and hands before shoots, it does show up a little bit. The logo is very nice at the back and you get these very classy buttons, four buttons right here that are neatly almost hidden. They used to be very prominent but now they're hidden a little bit better and it blends in with the overall styling of the unit. This is the home screen and uh, first thing you will kind of notice is that it is basically using very familiar home screens. In fact, it has global handwriting that is pulled from Big Me. That's all we can say about that. So you get the sides right here with notes, library, apps, files, tasks, and add application. Yes, you can customize your bar and you have everything that changes here, whereas the sides and the top banners stay the same. For example, this is going to be isolated and not going to be subject to any refresh, whereas the middle will. If you do the top down again, you get the brightness, the temperature screenshot, floating ball, you get global handwriting, which makes you the ability to write over any application, which does come in handy because outside of OneNote on an Onyx, for example, you can't really take notes on any other application. You do have Bluetooth for audio, although there is no speaker on it. And if you go to the settings, you will get very minimal settings. I'm talking very minimal settings. You have display, you have volume, battery, and everything is just kind of superficial. And unfortunately, no, there is no way to tap on any of these 10 or 15 times to get into developer options, nor is the kind of Android go to top right corner 20 times pushes you into developer options either. So you have no control over any of that. Outside of the odd A2 mode found on some devices, this one genuinely has speed modes, HD, normal, and extreme. When you do have it on an HD mode, it's really, really good looking. However, that comes at a massive downside in that it is extremely slow. When you have it on HD mode, you can see so much as clicking something that took around two seconds to really trigger. Now, it's just going to be a learning curve and it's going to come with time after updates etc but you're gonna have to get used to the fact that it's not the fastest unit but pocketbook is pushing their company in multiple directions to have better equipped versions of these type of units in the future. What we want to look at now, which we just customized, but we'll go to the app screen anyways, is Google Play because this is a massive, gigantic, 
huge thing of them because Pocketbook, we know that 10 manufacturers, now 11, use Google Play, but Pocketbook never has until now in any official capacity. And why this is important is because this puts Pocketbook in a position to now turn this device into anything you want. Do you want Barnes & Noble? Do you want Kobo? Do you want Amazon Kindle? Do you want the Sony Reader Store on this? Do you want to download Moon Plus Reader, Aldico, Gmail, Microsoft Outlook, OneNote? The list goes on. Millions, millions of applications can now be downloaded onto this. This is something we want to touch on really quick. DPI. DPI is the exact same thing as PPI. DPI refers to printed matter, dots per inch. PPI is pixels per inch. DPI and PPI mean the same thing. No, this is not a PPI change. You do not have the ability to change this into 420 DPI or PPI screen. That's not what that means. It is a overall system zoom. It is mislabeled, so just please consider yourselves warned when you see this PPI toggle. That's not what it is. You have the ability to do a system zoom, although it kind of flashes in and out of things when you do it. And if you get too lost, you can reset to default. You do have the ability to change contrast as well. And of course, choose the different modes as we said earlier. And to speed things up, we're going to go into normal because it's a little bit laggy. Now, this gives you something else, which we're going to transition into right now. Books. Because when you have Google Play, you have Google Books, which means you have ebooks, audiobooks, mangas, top selling, everything. You literally just click on something like an ebook and you get unlimited amount of books, samples, purchases, subscriptions, anything you want. Now, when you use things like Google Books, you can see that the page turns are very slow It's because there's a ton of animation happening on the screen. So first thing you need to do is go to those speed modes, go down to app optimize, hit that extreme mode and things are going to feel a lot better. So we go to extreme mode. Now, what does it look like? Now we have a big chunky e-reader. This is a huge slate. This is bigger than a Kindle scribe, technically, because this is 10.3 versus 10.2. And now we have very smooth animations. I cannot stress that we have been in business for 16 years now, and we've never seen Pocketbook look smooth like this. Not that there's anything wrong with Pocketbook, but Pocketbook never put themselves in a priority with animations and handling animations and managing what those look like. But now we can. We have this smoothness. We have this kind of instant, instantaneous gratification of being able to handle refresh properly. We even have the little floating ball here that they, again, borrowed from what looks like Big Me to allow you to get more commands over things. So the reading experience is only going to be as good as the app you're using, of course. So if you're using Google Books, if you're using the stock reader, if you're using Aldeco, Moon Plus Reader, there's so many reading applications. We can't just sum it all up, but you do have the ability now, more so than ever, to get things that give you more robust features just with having Google Play and they give you a decent platform to be able to pull that off. Manga is something that has been steadily increasing in popularity year on year on year and more manufacturers even the likes of MeBook and iReader have putting more of a priority on manga and one of the three things you choose on Google Books out of eBooks audiobooks and manga, it's prominently placed on just about every multimedia consumption delivered ecosystem. So what we are going to do is show you a little bit here. Now you see what's happening and it looks rather confusing. Don't be confused. What Google Books does is actually increases the individual speech bubbles to whatever you're reading and it goes in line and it doesn't just zoom in it actually gives you a keyed out render of it you can see how it's not just a square block this is actually keyed out you can also double tap them if you want to isolate it yourself and still hold command over the page it is an extremely high quality manga experience and one of the only real manga apps I recommend to a lot of people because it's a legitimate one it's not the ones that give you unlimited free content this is a proper delivery that you can purchase all your favorite media, all your favorite series directly on the unit. And now that there's Google Play, it gives you all the power to do that. There's really nothing wrong with the overall experience of it. The, it's crystal clear. It has a sunken screen and bezel, so arguably it has a better result of viewing than something that has so many things in front 
of the e-ink screen itself. This has less things intruding and impairing the actual screen. Although it has a touch digitizer and it has an EMR layer that you utilize the pen with, there's just less things in the way. And it is surprising how well they were able to pull that off with the gel layer that commands the glow light and everything else alongside. This is massive that this has note taking. I don't want to understate that. In fact, the only thing we've seen that these guys have done any note taking in is scribble dating as far back as the pocketbook color. These are all the pens, these are all the line thicknesses, and these are all the colors. You get four colors plus white. Now, there is a little bit of some things you have to be concerned with. By the way, we're using the Kindle Scribe pen, not the stock one. The stock one's a little vanilla, and as we always say to keep things fair, we always use a pen that doesn't come with the unit in order to test everything. Now, this is your drop down of the pens. You have pen, pencil, and paintbrush. You have white, you have all the color thicknesses. Now, the thicknesses is something of a little bit of concern. If you draw very lightly or very hard, the differences between the two are not huge. It's not a massive spread between the two colors. So if we go to something like a black with a standard pen even, and we draw the lightest possible line so that it even functions, or the thickest possible line without damaging the screen, there's almost no difference. It's a very small degree of difference. It truly isn't the 4000 we see on other devices like the Quaderno, like the the Remarkable 2, the Onyx devices, the Big Me devices. This one is a little bit more kind of streamlined and it does have a reliance on the pen thicknesses. You do have the ability to add in text or shapes or photos and you do have the lasso tool so you can take full advantage of that. You can move it around, you can stretch it, you can expand it, you can stamp it, all that fun stuff. Yes, the reverse polarity of EMR pens work as well so you can go ahead and make sure you can erase everything on the page. You do have undo, redo and you have more. This is kind of cool. I like this one, vertical mode because because vertical mode actually puts everything on the side if it functions and I feel like it's more of akin to you holding a palette you know like the painters use it, it it shows everything in line and other than this looking a little broken and extended I think it's a good choice but we'll just kind of put that back for now but just keep in mind that is there we'll get to writing a note in a second but we just want to show off the keyboard now that we're here so the keyboard's going to pop up like that and I'm just gonna write my name as you can see it P E T E R space I S space C O O L and we'll see how well, it does. It's a little bit of a struggle, but it didn't miss anything. And we've seen worse from other companies, so that's not bad. You have add page as well. Now, there's another downside with this that I hope they address, which can easily be done via an update. Template. They have a lot of templates. That's not the issue. And they have local storage as well, where you can put things in internal storage slash note template. The problem is, if you choose something like large squares, it's on this page, but it also goes on the entire book. So it'll go on the first page as well. If we go back to the first page we saw now we have those large squares why well, I, I want this to be blank maybe I want this to be maybe ledger but you can't do that you'll have to save it go back and start an all new note that would be the only way to do that honestly the writing experience is very good I am an absolute sucker when it comes to plastic screens. I am a purist when it comes to getting the feel of pen on paper. You get that grittiness. You sometimes get a little squeakiness. You get that grip. It feels like there's some substance there. I'm not the biggest fan of drawing on something that has a glass screen. Onyx is a very high quality company, a very high quality experience, but it's almost as if I'm drawing on my cell phone, which some people like. It's a, it's a subjective thing, but I think this is a top-notch note-taking feel, although it's not the fastest in the game. And as you see here, it takes a second to get things going when you start your notes. We'll start the PDF with using a very familiar X reader and we'll go into it from there. This works very quickly, it gets into everything very fast and actually faster than the onboard one. So you can see it saved some of my scribbles there, which it actually does. So if you have a document and someone says, hey, sign the bottom and you get your document and they say, okay, I need my 
signature, boom, done. And when you export that, it has that signature, which this has the ability to do so. So the beauty of this is that it has a ton of features. Now you have the ability to change all the text and you see you have contrast, watermark, bleaching page, all that stuff you've seen a million times before, but we want to show you split screen because this is a very useful very useful feature, especially on a big screen. Press the little eyeball down below and split screen it for view with notes. That's what we want. You can do two documents side by side, but we will do notes side by side with the PDF, which means if I have my text documentation here, I'm trying to learn so I can go over here and start taking my notes. Now there's a small problem with this in that it takes a second to get going, number one, and number two, you have to actually trigger between each side. For example, I can draw there, I can't draw there right away, but now I can. It takes two clicks for it to get going. I want to go on this side now, so it's one click, and now it'll do it. So you have to trigger back and forth between each one, but it's pretty cool because you do have access to change pages on this side and change pages and utilize the whole palette on this side. So that split screen definitely makes good use of it, seeing that you do have a lot of screen real estate now, and this is a very large unit. It's not 13.3, but as you saw from our video chronology, there's only five 13.3s that you can still buy today. Lastly, the glow light. I mean, to be completely honest, glow lights haven't been impressive since 2014 when they went from terrible to good. So yeah, they use a gel layer now and it's all perfectly copacetic. There's no tears in the screen or anything like that. Glow lights have hit a point of almost perfect R&D. You don't need to really discover anything anymore. It, it works. They used to have LEDs that shined light on it and then some were working with the sides and some were working with the top and bottom and they had different spacing now it just the it illuminates a gel layer so right there and dead center mass will be the exact same luminosity not too much to be impressed about these days but it's nice that it has it and you have a temperature control Wacom Stylus support, onboard Google Play, and multimedia playback allows this to be considered more than just an ebook reader for Pocketbook. But it's not without its caveats. It's a little bit slow, there's no onboard audio except for Bluetooth, and although it's nice to take notes on a sunken screen and bezel, it does leave things a little bit exposed. Overall, without a doubt, this is one of the most interesting releases we've seen from the company in as long as we can remember. Pocketbook has always played it relatively safe when it comes to overall overall thematics of design and delivery of content, but now they've stepped into a whole new ball game that allows them to compete with a subsector they've never yet explored until now.